If I want to tell the story properly, I have to start at the beginning. You know, I'm not doing this all alone. I got this silent partner I've never seen or spoken, but we're a great team. One day he popped on the radar and since then he's provided me with the most amazing programs. Zen Floating Point, that's his. The Formula Translator in the Preprocessor, that's his too. And the 3D Graphics Library, that's also his. But that's not how all this started. One morning I open up my email and find a message with an enclosed source file. It's 40H. It compiles and runs without a hitch, so I include it in a repository. A year goes by, I am coming across a Rosetta code task that requires a graphics library, and then I remember I actually got one. It turns out it's real easy to use, and I quite like it. On closer examination it proves to be a portable Pixmap implementation. It's basically a bitmap. It supports binary grayscale images, also known as the P5 format, and binary color images, also known as the P6 format. A portable Pixmap file consists of a header and a raster of rows, in order from top to bottom. Each row consists of a width number of pixels, in order from left to right. That opens up quite some challenges when you come from another graphical API. The X and the Y coordinates are swapped. N coordinates 0, 0 refers to the top left corner, not the bottom left corner. Of course, you have to take that in consideration, but you get used to it after a while. Anyway, I really love this library, especially the Turtle Graphics extension. So I port a whole lot of programs to it. But some things are just missing like circles, ellipses, arcs, it also lacks a flat fill. So I take a deep dive in mathematics and graphics algorithms and start to add all these things, bit by bit. Now, I'm happy, my guy is happy, the community is happy, it just required a lot of time and effort. And then I thought, what about vector graphics? You see, bitmaps have a few drawbacks. They are big compared to vector graphics. And when you zoom in, at some point they become pixelated. Your line ceases to be a line, your character stops being a character and forget all about your circles and ellipses. I started out with Postscript, but although I dabbled a bit with the language some 30 years ago, I rejected that option pretty quickly. Too complex, I wanted quick results. SVG was an entirely different story. It blended in just fine. You know, in order to create a portable pix map in 40H you have to define the dimensions, just like in SVG. Then optionally you have to define the background color. I could do the same thing in SVG by defining a box having identical dimensions as the image and then fill it. Fun part, a portable pix map is memory mapped, so after you're done you have to dump it to disk. An SVG is not memory mapped and can be written straight to file at its very inception. One of the first things I added was plotting, since that's required quite often. Of course there are no individual pixels to set in SVG, so actually one pixel wide rectangles or circles are painted. Talking of shape, virtually every single shape in SVG has its own command. Mapping portable pixmap library words onto them was quite trivial. Just convert the parameters and we're there. With the exception of circle arcs I must admit. But actually I'd done quite some work when designing that very same functionality for the portable pixmap library. Of course I had to replicate adding text, but that proved to be much easier than I thought. And finally I threw in polylines for good measure. Like our portable pixmap library, SVG uses RGB triplets. Which is a great fit. So I defined the basic 8 colors and the color word to set them. Why? Because SVG has no flood fill routine. 
Instead of selecting a coordinate and issue a fill command, shapes have a fill color. And I'd rather use the familiar color words for that one than come up with some weird and awkward solution nobody really digs. And then it dawned upon me. I had replicated almost the entire portable PixMap library. All I had to do was to backport a few words, and that's it. Porting programs to this SVG library would be a cinch. Now, there was also a 3D graphics library and a turtle graphics library, but because this new SVG API was so similar to the old one, interfacing with it was quite trivial. I did it within a day. Of course, I contacted my silent partner, asking if he agreed to these minor changes. And fortunately he did. We converted a lot of programs that weekend. Now, apart from the polyline and the circle arc, it was all very, very trivial. And when something is very, very trivial, I tend to resort to my uBasic Ford interpreter to see how far I can take a concept. And it's far. Gee, some stuff even made it to Rosetta Code. It was that powerful. In basic, the entire library takes about 175 lines. In 40H that same functionality is realized in just 125 lines. It's still Ford, you know. Add another 30 lines and we'll throw in polar lines and circle arcs as well. That's all, that's the entire library. And you can create the most wonderful images with it. Recently I came across the Witch of Agnesi. It just took me minutes to crank out the Ford version. Frankly, if you need some graphing functionality, no matter the language, you can't go wrong with this library. If you have any proficiency in that particular language, you should be able to port it in an hour or so. And it's very, very lightweight. It barely burns any cycles, nor does it require a lot of memory. I'd say give it go. And ending on that positive note, I'm Hans Bezemer, and this was Back and Forth.